the focus really of what I want to kind of pull out of your latest book, Max, is is the sense of courage, but also the title of your latest book, You're Made for This Moment. Yeah. It's very empowering. And I think for, you know, young women and women like my age, it's something that we really need to be encouraged for. So before we we talk about this, you know, you were made for this moment, I want to talk about one of my favorite stories in the Bible, Esther, because your book is is really centered around her and her story. And for our listeners, uh, Max, could you kind of give a synopsis of the story? Because we have people that are unfamiliar with the story. Yeah, and then it, tied in. Mm-hmm. it is a delight. And I think I can summarize it. It's a nine chapter book in the Old Testament. Uh, mm-hmm. The setting is fifth century BC. Uh, four main characters. Uh, number one is a king by the name of Xerxes. He was the Alexander the Great of Persia. I mean, he was he was uh, young and wealthy, wealthy beyond possible imagination. Uh, he's about 30, 35 years old during the setting of this story. The book attributes nothing wise to him. If you read the book, you think he's just a good drinker, not a good thinker, because he doesn't Mm -hmm. say much, but he's always drinking. He has a right-hand man by the name of Haman, H-A-M-A-N, and Mm -hmm. Haman is the Hitler of his day. He Mm -hmm. has an anti-Semitic strain that traces itself back to many, many generations. And he decides that every Jew uh, should be killed. Now, keep in mind, 500 BC, ancient Persia, uh, by now the Jews have have been scattered all over the then known world. And, uh, and, and, And there is no temple. Uh, Jerusalem is still in ruins. And by the time we get to the book of Esther, these people have been away from Jerusalem, away from their homeland for about three generations. Two of them uh, have chosen to keep their ancestry a secret. And these are the other two main characters, Mordecai, who has worked his way up as a a high ranking official uh, in the uh, in the in the court of Xerxes. And uh, and then uh, Esther, uh, uh, you know, Hadassah in, in her Hebrew name, uh, Esther is, is the not dead, gorgeous, beautiful he- Hollywood head turner girl who at, uh, against all odds is selected to be the queen of, mm-hmm. uh, the king. And so here you got these two people, nobody knows they're Jews. One works for the king, the other sleeps with the king. And then the most terrible a tragedy occurs uh Haman declares a holocaust he's going to destroy all the Jews he's going to kill everybody of Jewish ancestry and then he declares that everybody needs to bow before him and Mordecai refuses to do so because he knows that Haman is this anti-semitic thug and he refuses to bow and that's when sets in motion all of these things that we read about in the book of Esther. I, I'm a little hesitant to give away Melinda too much of the punchline now, because I think of what the appetite, but, but, but suffice it to say that Mordecai discloses his Jewish ancestry. Mm-hmm. He appeals to his cousin Esther to do the same as queen. She initially resists, but she eventually complies and there's courage all over her face as she steps into the presence of Xerxes. And thanks to her, thanks to her faith, thanks to her devotion, the children of Israel are delivered. So suffice it to say, Ooh, it's a chill. story of, okay, th- does this sound like our day? Misogyny, thugs, mm-hmm. uh, 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 mistreatment of, of, yep. of women, and yep. yet a woman in the midst of this uh, anti-Jewish, anti-female culture rises up to be the hero mm. of the story. Mm. I mean, if that doesn't get your pulse going. I know. Right. I was getting chills, Max. Like I was getting chills all over and going, here's the story of the day. Thankful that you, you've, you've brought this story back in again into this new book. Okay, so we- I, I'm not sure why it's not studied more. It, I know. That's a good it, question. It, it, it's a phenomenal story. Now, here's the other uh, unique feature, and I know you're probably heading in this direction, but- Esther is one of the two books in the Bible that make no mention of the name of God, the other being Song of Solomon. Hmm. Now, that's interesting. There's no mention of the name of God. The fingerprints of God are everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If you're going through a hard time, 
If you feel like you're isolated in Persia, if you feel like the world is against you, then you probably feel like there's no mention of God in your life either. Ooh, and so wow. this is a story to help us when we feel in a kind of a global crisis, like a global pandemic. It's a time in which we can trust. And here's how God works to get his people through hard times. Oh, Max, that's powerful. I never saw that where there was, I mean, I, I read through in the book and there was mention in it about, you know, God wasn't mentioned, but that really, I know, is going to resonate with a lot of our viewers and listeners because many people go, I, I'm feeling like God's not here. I don't sense him, feel him. There's no mention of him. And yet I just loved how you said that, that the fingerprints of God are all over this story. Woo. That's encouraging. That's, that's a good reminder for people who are listening to say, God is at work all the time. You may not see it, but his fingerprints are there. Okay. So you've set up the story. I love it. That was very succinct. You must know what you're, <laughs> you must be well, you know, a storyteller. By the, time you've, well, by the time you've written a book about it, <laughs> yes, if, if you can't give, they, they, if you can't give an elevator talk, uh, you're in bad shape. Exactly. Okay. So we've talked about courage and, and I want you to kind of fit together. So we have this powerful story of Esther and then you have this, which I love because it sounds like what a parent would say or a coach would say or a parent or pastor would say about, you know, you were made for this moment. I heard that growing up. There were moments that, you know, I was called to kind of step into leadership or step in to, to communicate or preach or whatever. And people would say you're made for this moment. So to help, help us understand the story of Esther and yet, and you were made for this moment. Because I can see it, but I, I'd like to hear what yeah, your thoughts yeah, are on that. Yeah, yeah. The theological term is quiet providence. This is what the Bible or theologians call quiet providence. Hmm. Now, now, sometimes we see the providence of God in a very stated fashion, like when the Red Sea opens, mm -hmm. when Lazarus is called from the dead. Of course, when we see Jesus risen from the dead, that's providential. We all love the visible providential outworkings of God. Most of life, however, is seen in the quiet uh, providence of God, where God works behind the scenes, mm. uh, where he doesn't have to have his name uh, on the billboard, uh, but that he's working quietly in orchestrating things. I believe, for example, that I believe in God's quiet providence, and mm -hmm. I believe that God in his quiet providence moved you as a young girl from the Philippines to Canada. And he prepared you, he equipped you with this delightful personality and this wonderful skill set that you have uh, to use, to be used for such a time as this. Uh, it, it, I would go so far as to say, as Acts 17 says, that God determines our, 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 where we live uh, in his perfect plan. In other words, I, I think you ended up in Canada because God knew that K Canada would need someone with your ability, skill, heart, and, and passion. I believe I ended up in Texas uh, because uh, for some reason, in his perfect plan, God felt like I, he could use my ministry better here. So it, it, to me, that's wonderfully reassuring. Mm, yeah. uh, because that that, tell, that that if God has called you to this place, uh, Melinda, then he's going to give you what you need to fulfill his mission. Uh, it's not doesn't mean we're not going to have to, you know, pedal uphill. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of uh, we're going to be we're going to feel those headwinds a lot. It's not easy. It's it's a tough thing we go through. It really mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And so but. I, I want to just say you, you're made for this moment. You know, if, if you if you're in a situation as a young mom and you've got three kids who are pulling everything out of you and you're pulling your hair out of your head, God will give you what you need. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I am saying that God is going to mm -hmm. help you. He'll meet you at the right time in the right way. Uh, that's what that's what Mordecai said to Esther. He said, now, Esther, relief will come. This is in Esther chapter four, the fourth chapter. Uh, relief will come. Uh, so the question is not, are we going to get through it? But then he said, who knows, but that you were placed in the kingdom for such a time as this. Maybe this is your role, Esther. And that's what got through to her. That's what, that's what took her from wanting to hide out and cloister. That's what took her from saying, if, if, I, if, if I go in there, I'll perish, to saying, well, if I perish, I perish. Yeah. It, it gave her courage was the belief that God would get them through it 
and that she was the person uh, to step up and be involved in the deliverance. 